Okay, fight fans and fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL in Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. Okay, fight fans, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. So... I asked them to pull the trigger, and pull the trigger they did. Congratulations, Elder Storm Alvarez, on a tremendous victory. I was giving the fight to Luce Bute up until that moment. He came on strong, he came on early, he did everything I would have wanted him to do. He got hit with a solid punch. Congratulations, Elder Storm Alvarez. You've been waiting too long for your shot against Adonis Stevenson. There is nowhere for him to hide. Hopefully everyone stays healthy and we get this baby done before September comes. And uh, that also, hoping that Adonis wins his fight on the 29th in New York, which, by the way, won't be Joseph Smith, according to rumors, more than likely Monaghan. If you're saying who, don't worry, I had to look into it as well. Not the point. Adonis wins April 29th. September, Elder Storm Alvarez versus Adonis Stevenson. Another Montreal versus Montreal fight. I'm not a huge fan of those, but this is necessary. It might be a changing of the guard. We don't know, but it's going to be one hell of a fight, and it's going to be here. So it's going to be definitely on the Fight City. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to us for more news on that as it comes closer. As far as Luce Bute... Man, just respect. Gentlemen in and out of the ring. There's thousands of people that owe you thanks what, for what you've done for boxing, for what you've done for boxing here, for what you've done for people's bank accounts. Whether people like it or not, most of the major fights that have happened in recent history are thanks to you. A lot of popcorn, beer, and pay-per-views have been sold thanks to you. A lot of t-shirts. Hell, the most watched video on this channel is a Lute Bute workout video from like a year and a half ago. And it still does well. So, you know, there's a lot of us that owe uh, our continued work to Lute Bute's valiant efforts. He's done some tremendous things in the sport and uh, hopefully everybody respects him for it. Whether he continues boxing or not, I don't really care. Uh, here's the thing. Most people don't realize that even the last three fights, he didn't have to do any of them. Financially, he's very well respected and has been very smart with his money. So I don't have the regular fears that I do for other fighters when it comes to Luce Bute. He has made some endeavors and has built himself a small stable. So maybe, who knows, maybe future promoter or you know future boxing manager... No matter what he does, he's going to be great at it, and people are going to love him. Here's the thing, if he fights again, I don't care. I'll follow him into hell. Mad respect for Luce Bute. Like I said, a lot of our success has been tied to his work. He put a lot of work and a lot of food on people's plates. So I hope people don't forget that, you know... People often disrespect great champions when they lose. Okay, back on track. Francis Lafreniere. They gave him a guy, last minute replacement, 16-1. and one, And this guy earned that record. Wow. Uh, worked well off the back foot. Basically the perfect anti-Francis. It was a very tough fight for Francis. Uh, forward momentum, relentless will. All the things I usually say about Francis Lafreniere showed up and fired on all cylinders and got the split decision. Now, I personally would have given him a unanimous. I was okay with a split. There's one judge that scored it 98-92 and I don't know what the hell he was smoking because Francis did win, but the margin wasn't that wide. And I say this because the Mexican he fought, and I say this every freaking episode, man. Hats off to the matchmaker, by the way. These tough Mexicans. This guy was holding the back of Francis's elbows. He gave Francis elbows on the head, punched Francis in the back of the head. 
Uh, you know, I kind of wish he had a different referee, somebody that would have maybe have been a little wiser to this guy's tricks. But uh, Francis persevered. Terrific win for him. Another title uh, moves up in the rankings. This is very significant. Here's hoping they uh, put him on the shelf for six months, let him get a little uh, rest. He's had three back-to-back -back wars. A Francis Lafreniere fight is not an easy day's work. So, here's hoping to use him sparingly now that he's reached a bit of a higher spectrum as far as talent goes. He's really showed that he can hold his own against a guy that was 16-1 and and that was very highly touted and that could have very easily on against another opponent won that belt. So, you know, here's looking forward to news for Francis Lafreniere. Uh, Butch Bouchard. Again, also a very tough Mexican opponent. Terrific win on his part. Dario Bredician, also a very tough Mexican. He wobbled him. He got close. But man, that Mexican was so tough. Terrific win for Dario Bredician. Uh, by the way, when I was talking about Butte Stable, he's one of them. Uh, look into him. Actually, look into him and his brother fighting March 30th at the Casino de Montreal. That would be Bruno Bredician. The Bredician brothers, fantastic future prospects to look into. They're originally from Florida, living in Montreal. Check them out. Now, as far as stealing the show goes, a lot of people were expecting Eric Martel Belloui to walk out with a title. Um, the truth is, most of the heavyweight fights that we get aren't you know, exactly up to par, and it is what it is, you know, so our expectations aren't usually as high. But Adam Braywood, woo, this guy stole the show. Fantastic stuff from him. Now, before I get to him, uh, Eric Martel obviously lost the fight, didn't get to hold the title in front of his fans, but still a gentleman in his loss, and uh, I know for a fact that his future plans will still be around boxing and the boxing world. And uh, you could not ask for a better spokesperson. Here's hoping uh, we get to see a little bit more of Eric Martel, maybe outside of the ring. Fantastic effort on his part. Heavyweight boxing is no joke, man. There's nothing you can do about a big heavyweight knockout punch. If it comes, it comes. If your number's on it, your number's on it. So congratulations to Adam Braywood, who stole the show. This guy's got character for days. People love his personality. Think Mountain from Game of Thrones meets Macho Man Randy Savage. This guy is perfect. Now, uh, if you look into him, he's got a bit of a weird backstory, but I mean, who doesn't in boxing? And the point that matters now is that he's doing good now. And uh, fantastic win on his part. Here's hoping, there's already talks about this guy fighting people. Uh, here's hoping they get him to fight Big Ray for the CPPC title, the Canadian title, or Dylan Carmen for Dylan Carmen's title, or even all three of them go at it. I just want something to happen. This guy could very well be a star, and he is somebody to look into. Please check him out on social media. Look for him on Instagram. He's new to social media, so everything he does is just funny as hell. Uh, check him out. He's definitely somebody to follow and like. Definitely won over this guy. I am a big fan as of now. Look forward to news of Adam Braywood. He got a cut over his eye, so we're probably not going to see him for a couple months. But I got a feeling they're going to line something up for him. He now has a title, so congratulations to him. As far as the other fights this weekend, the only other fight I'll mention is the heavyweight title fight between Deontay Wilder and El Gallo Negro Washington. Now, uh, up until the end, I thought Washington was doing pretty good. I really would have wanted Washington to win. He was boxing well, and personally, I want my heavyweight champion to be able to box properly. Uh, I'm not trying to talk badly about Deontay Wilder. I don't want to end up in a boxing ring with him. However, um, you know, he's the champ, deserves the respect. Everyone needs to remember how he won that title. Now, uh, part of the reason he exists as our champion is because he beat Bermain Stavern. Now, mind you, Bermain Stavern had some sort of weird blood disease and was basically dying in the ring, which, by the way, he lasted 12 rounds, which no one else can say. Lost the fight, and then we got Deontay Wilder and whatever defenses he's really had. Ha hasn't really made any monumental moves in the heavyweight world. 
they announced that Bermain Stavernes is mandatory. He was calling up Joseph Parker and Huey Fury and even Brazil because of some messed up thing in the hotel lobby. But Bermain Stavernes the mandatory. <sighs> Here's hoping Bermain Stavernes gets redemption. I need him to redeem himself because he should have won that fight the first time around. And we all know it. So... Here's hoping the stars align properly, no one gets hurt, and that fight happens. By the way, if you're going to argue with me about Deontay Wilder, yeah, okay. So as far as what's going on on the FightCity.com this week, great articles and posts for you guys to check out on the daily. Great social media feed. Please check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We've got some terrific videos on the YouTube channel, press conference stuff, weigh-ins. Please check it out. Also, if you like the t-shirts, don't be shy. Hit us up. We'll be glad to send you one. Now, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've got a lot more stuff to talk about for this episode. We've got some terrific fights this weekend. So as far as all the other news that's going on in the fight world this week, in boxing and MMA, in the UFC, in combat sports, please check out my Facebook page this Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. I'll be going live and we can discuss it all. You guys can ask me questions. I'll be there to answer them. I have a few topic points. There's been some stuff going on in the news this week that we definitely have to cover. So please check me out at 10.30 Thursday night. Now, as far as what's going on this weekend, we've got some fantastic fights. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm going to narrow it down to two promotions because there's so much to talk about. UFC 209 going down this weekend. A terrific night of fights. It's live on pay-per-view. Huge stack card to talk about. I could talk for days just about the card, but we're going to bring it down to a couple fights. The main event, no more draws, folks. We're going to get a champ. Thompson versus Woodley. I'm picking Thompson. This is going to be one hell of a fight, so make sure you tune in. The co-main event is one hell of a fight. Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Ferguson. Tony Ferguson's been on a tear. Uh, Khabib's just an animal. This is for an interim title. I don't care what they call it. This is for the title. Khabib's going to be the champ. Check out that fight. Now, uh, there's other fights, obviously, but the only other one I want to mention to you guys is Mark Hunt versus Alistair Overeem. That is guaranteed knockout. Whoever, well, listen, let's face facts. Mark Hunt's not going to sleep. I'm, I'm picking Mark Hunt to knock Alistair Overeem out. I predict a very angry Mark Hunt, so uh, I look forward to that fight. Now, like I said, there's plenty of other fights on that card. Please check it out. There's some free stuff on the Fight Network. However, we've got a terrific night of boxing. PBC, live and free. Folks, free. Believe that. Believe that. Man, thank you, Keith Thurman. And those that know boxing know why I'm saying that. Listen, Andre from Farah, Heather Hardy. I don't know these dudes. Sergey Lipnitz, who's 10-0, is actually looking into that kid. Uh, Erickson Lubin, The Hammer, The Main Event, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. I liked Danny before, but like, I don't know, man, his dad's getting on my nerves, and, uh, you know, his defenses haven't really been that great. I know he knocked out Matisse, but, uh, Keith Thurman, on the other hand, I'm still big on, and, uh, ever since I met him, I'm even bigger on him. It was weird, because I couldn't even get close to Danny Garcia. He had this big entourage and everything. Nah, he was with Meek Mill and Iverson, so part of that was that. So he was impossible to talk to, so I didn't get to talk to him. But Keith Thurman's in a suit, just walking around, shaking hands with people like he's the Mater D. It was just some crazy stuff. It was like, hello, thank you, nice to meet you. It was like very presidential, it's very weird. Uh... Very cool and humble dude. I got to meet him. I got him a picture with um, Shaquille Finn when we were in Philadelphia. Just a great guy. And personally, I think he'd be a great champ. So, uh, here's looking forward to him taking Danny Garcia's belt. That is my pick for that fight. That's it for me this week. Make sure to check me out on Facebook. I'm going to be live this Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. Folks, if you know me, you know my situation, you're on... Uh, all my social media accounts and you know what's going on. 
We need sponsors, folks. We need some people that have vision to tie their name to mine, to tie their name to the Fight City and all these other plans and ambitions I have. Um, I ain't too proud to beg. Put the word out there, man. We need to make this happen. You know it, I know it. So help me do it, folks. That's it for me this week. Like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week.